welcome to another lecture of quantum mechanics in this lecture we'll discuss about hermitian operator now an operator a an operator a is said to be is said to be hermitian or it has another name self adjoint sometimes in exam you see that this word has been used if a dagger which is the adjoint hermitian adjoint of a gives you a back all right so this is the condition for an operator to be hermitian if any operator satisfies this condition where taking an a hermitian adjoint of the operator gives you the same operator okay now in dirac notation we we'll write down the same condition dirac notation gives you the or you can say this is a bracket notation in dirac notation when we write this condition it it looks like it, it looks like this you take a dagger now we have already told you that you can uh, consider the ket vectors as the column vector and the this bra vectors as row vector row column row matrix and the operator as a square matrix so when we take a dagger we rearrange them right if you remember this that if we have a b c if you take a transpose you get c transpose b transpose and a transpose similarly these three things are separate entities you can write like this that you can rearrange like this what we have done here and uh, always think of an operator or like a, a matrix okay so it's easier to visualize that thing so we have this now further we know that the dagger of a or a conjugate transpose of ket vector is bra vector okay and a dagger should be should give you a and this one the conjugate transpose of bra vector will give you a ket vector in integral form now this was the dirac notation form bracket notation form in integral form in integral form it looks like this as in middle plus infinity psi star a operating on phi dx is equal to minus to plus infinity a operating on psi star phi dx okay so this is the condition in the same condition this is the same condition in dirac notation and so we can write like this that this a sandwich between psi and phi we have a dagger on that gives you this thing earlier the a in this side was acting on phi now it acts on psi okay and in this case also it was acting on phi okay and this time it's all acting on psi all right so we'll take an example and see how to use this integral form the question is prove that momentum operator 
that is Px, which is given by minus ih cut d by dx is Hermitian is a Hermitian operator. Now starting with this integral on the left left hand side we will write like this minus an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi star px operating on phi dx is equal to now what we'll do is we'll place the operator format the operator form explicit form in this instead in place of px integral from minus infinity to plus infinity psi star minus ih cut d by dx phi dx one thing we have to assume here is this psi and phi are acceptable bound state wave functions that means that if now these are one dimensional wave functions we are just applying this equation in 1D so we'll just have x going to plus minus infinity that means this line which says that acceptable bound state wave functions this means that this psi and phi should go to 0 at plus minus infinity now from this point we'll write here that minus ih cut will come outside minus infinity plus infinity psi star d phi x dx next we'll apply integration by parts so integration by parts gives you we integrate d phi by dx minus minus infinity plus infinity d phi dx star integral d phi dx dx and we have another dx so this is the total integral by parts now this term this term when we integrate this we get phi right so phi if you put the upper limit and lower limit phi goes to zero right we can write like this this is phi now this is minus infinity plus infinity minus minus infinity plus infinity integral d psi star by dx phi dx all right so in this case what we know that this is the acceptable wave function so this will go to zero as well as psi, psi will also go to zero phi and psi both will go to zero because both are acceptable bound state wave functions and both have the condition that in the limits plus minus infinity both go to zero this term becomes zero now what we have here is i h cut minus infinity to plus infinity d psi star by dx phi dx we need to go from this one to this form if we are able to do that then the operator is said to be Hermitian. now in order to get this form what we can do is we can we want to keep we want to get the px form back again so px has a minus sign we take this constant inside of this conjugate sign with a minus sign right ih cut d by dx psi this is the whole star and phi dx if you are not able to get how we how did we go from this to this you can simply take the conjugate of these this term you'll get this result 
So if you take a conjugate, you get this size the star on psi, and if you take conjugate, you are you are replacing minus iota by plus iota. So in the end, we have minus into plus infinity p x psi star phi d x. So we are getting back this result. We started with this. We ended up with this. That means that p x is a Hermitian operator, and this is a very important result. Okay. Now we will note down two important properties which we'll be using in the course for the Hermitian operator. Which are as follows. We'll state this without proof. So the first property is for Hermitian for a Hermitian operator for a Hermitian operator all of its eigenvalues. Are real. Now, this is a very important point, and this is also a reason why the operators in quantum mechanics are real, because the measurements we make, these eigenvalues are the measurements of the operator. So the measurements we make are all real value measurements. Okay. The second property is that the eigenfunction. The eigenfunction corresponding to corresponding to different eigenvalues are orthogonal. Are orthogonal. Now this means that mathematically we can write if a dagger is equal to a, which means the a, a is Hermitian. This means that a is Hermitian, and a operating on psi one is equal to lambda one psi one, and a operating on psi two. Gives you lambda two. That means you have different eigenfunctions. Again, you can write eigenfunctions. We have two different eigenfunctions with two different eigenvalues. So this says that means if lambda is not equal to lambda two, right? Different. This implies that if you take a inner product or a scalar product. It should give you zero. Now this is equivalent to writing in integral form as this, which we had discussed in the orthogonality property lecture. If two wave functions are orthogonal, this is the Dirac notation. This is the integral notation. But both are the scalar products or the inner products. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. If you find these lectures useful, then please like, like, subscribe, and share with your friends.